<laughs> Welcome to 2014. <laughs> Off to a fantastic start. <laughs> Should we just talk about Scott Atkins this whole time? Yeah. <laughs> so Ed Glazer is the bad guy in this yeah, movie. Yeah, King Ed Glazer is the villain <laughs> in The Legend of Hercules. And he is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you bring it down the wrath of Zeus on me, boy! Because <laughs> that's how they talk. <laughs> I mean, probably. Oh, this movie covers all the accents. Scott Atkins, Boris the Blade's Russian in this. I don't know what the fuck Hercules is just speaking. Like it just—he's speaking some ac some accent where the last syllable in every sentence just drops. <laughs> he's speaking an accent where the last syllable in every sentence is ah. <laughs> oh, it's a little bit of Scott Atkins thrown in there. <laughs> that was the old. This movie is, it's you know, it was really nice of him to give us the asylum version of Hercules, like theatrical. I have no idea why this movie is a theatrical release. None. It's, I, it's preposterous. It's a goddamn cartoon. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, it is. It's a mixture of watching the Asylum version of Hercules and what Bruno Mattei's Hercules would look like if it were made today. Like, I want to believe that this is in canon with Lou Ferrigno's Hercules and Seven Magnificent Gladiators. Oh, yeah, no. The, the only thing they were missing was their own Sybil Danning. Yeah! <laughs> oh, that's another thing, too. Like, this movie is so begging to be R-rated, it's not even funny. It was distracting how this thing was fucking chopped up, sliced and diced. Guy gets stabbed in the chest off screen, then it pans back and uh, he's got like this long beard and you just see the sword coming mm -hmm. out from under the beard. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, he stabbed him in the beard, he dies. Yeah, I didn't fucking... Bloodless. This movie's completely bloodless. And, like, see, see, it, it opens where in any normal movie, Scott Adkins would have chopped a man's head off and held up a severed head. This one, nah, it's just his helmet. That means he's dead. Yeah, it, it, it's a really <laughs> weird cut. He's fighting this guy. It, it basically, like, that scene felt like a scene out of, like, Immortals. Yeah. Like, oh, it oh. felt like he should have been fighting, like, uh, fucking, uh, Mickey Rourke. Yeah, yeah. Or fucking, um, 300. Yeah. That was, that's the opening act of this movie. This is totally the, how you, how you always heard about back when they were making the Italian knockoffs 30 years ago, how the person at the studio would be like, you, you were there, you make Mad Max, go, go fucking make Mad Max. And here's a little bit of money. Get Bruno, get Claudio in there. There you go. Give us fucking Mad Max. That's this, except it's 300 and Gladiator. Same budget, though, that they would have given fucking <laughs> Claudio for custom. Yeah. It just, it just equate it to, like, really bad computer effects, which, to be perfectly honest, really aren't that worse than the CGI in Gladiator. Yeah. It's just, just that Gladiator was a much better choreographed movie, at least. <laughs> I mean, there, there were scenes in this like, like okay, car cartoonish shit is happening. Yeah, and uh, it kept doing slow mos to make it more. Oh obvious. my god! <laughs> we'll go back to that. But like, like there was a scene like uh, a chick is riding a horse. They're riding away, and uh, from like the side shot, okay, it's people riding through the forest. Uh, a little bit closer, like it. You know, it kind of looks like she's riding in front of a green screen. But then oh, there's yeah. one shot where. <laughs> Or she's she's writing and she kind of like turns and looks over her mm. shoulder like that, <laughs> dramatic chipmunk style there, and uh, it 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 looks like when fucking people were driving, like it looked as believable as like the driving scenes in like an old timey movie. Yeah, like Psycho or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it looked like as believable. Projection. <laughs> yeah, that's just, and he's right. It's just like this one shot in this sequence is like that, and it's. Dear God, did it stand out. It looked like all of a sudden, like, you're going to a theme park and you go into one of those, like, booth areas that sits you in front of, like, a chase sequence or something like that. And you're it's like, oh, 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 oh
for like what? And then later on, when it's like, like they for, they forgot, like it, I feel like they forgot to film a scene, and they're like, yeah. shit, we already tore down the green screen. Stand in front of this TV <laughs> because God forbid <laughs> that shot wasn't in the in that sequence, the pivotal shot of her looking behind her, and then fucking later on when the four of them, Hercules, her, I think, and Boris the Blade. And the other dude are standing in front of that fucking mountain, and it looked just as horrible. <laughs> oh my god. They were just standing right in front of a Bob Ross painting. It was great. <laughs> I was waiting for, like, a couple moving guys to, like, move it out of the way. It's like, yeah, this is where we're going to put the mountain. <laughs> yeah. And no joke, the second act of this movie is Gladiator. It's just fucking Gladiator. It's Hercules is sold into... a the fucking gladiator ring and he rises up in the ranks of fighting like other gladiators there's even like fucking his brother is basically commodus yeah like even looks just fucking like him it's like shifty look like as soon as you see him like oh well, he's a bad guy yeah and you know what fake fucking loki in this I was thinking that too. I was like, he's Commodus, but he's kind of trying to be Loki a little bit. It was okay. They were trying to make Hercules Thor, so. Oh, 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 oh God, yeah. And He Man. Let's not forget that he turns into He Man. That at the was end of an it. amazing. <laughs> at this point. It was everything but the fucking I have the power. Oh, my God. I was pray I, I thought I saw it coming, and I was praying it was going to happen. <laughs> Father, give me strength! Krakow! Yeah. Lightning to the sword. Yeah. Oh, holy shit. Like, er, like this is after Hercules realizes that he's Hercules and he has the power. And so he finally he has to realize that he's Hercules before. It's like, it's like I'm just this guy. I'll go by the name Hercules. <laughs> yeah. Punch the face, bleeding. Like, uh -huh. now I'm a bitch. It's like, <laughs> wait, no. I'm actually Hercules. So it's pulling down fucking buildings and, like, punching people into like <laughs> with boulders and he's <laughs> chained up and he's figured fuck how do I get out of this situation I know I'll pray to Zeus he does and sky anus appears and just it's the it's it's, it's seriously the, the cloud butthole yeah <laughs> It's seriously like the ending of fucking, like, Snakes on a Train, when they pray to God and God saves them, and that's how the movie <laughs> ends. It was like this. It was like, he's in trouble, so he prays to God. God shows up and saves him. And he's able and to... And it's like instant gratification. Yeah. It's like, it's like, hey, turns out, Zeus, I believe I'm your kid. Super strong. Uh -huh. like, oh, sh wait, he's been waiting 35 years for him to say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, according to this movie, he's only 20. <laughs> which is about as believable as cause Scott Atkins that's is, true he's supposed to be exactly 20 yeah I forgot that <laughs> at the beginning it says 20 years later and he's got scenes with Scott Atkins and his mom in this they look like they're only three years older than him. It is so goddamn distracting. Well, they combed that gray <laughs> in the Scott Atkins beard. He doesn't look a fucking thing older. He looks like identical, except he has a, a slight bit of graying to his, his yeah. glorious beard. He looks like a 33-year-old who's prematurely graying in his beard. It's like, I've got a little bit of that going on down yeah. here. Yeah, our Nick. I don't have a twenty-year-old kid. Our buddy Nick. I mean, he's got some gray up in here. He's our age. He doesn't look forty-five. <laughs> and then they didn't do fuck all to the mom to make her look older. Oh, she looked the same. She wore her hair up. Yeah, they gave her an old lady haircut. Like that was it. <laughs> no graying or anything. Now you're supposed to be older now. So here, put on this shawl. Yeah. Ooh, this, this is this, this it's so chilly you now that you're old. <laughs> and then fucking at the end when he's him and his 47 Ronin are standing there, and Scott Atkins, who again is so awesome in this movie, he is amazing. He's having the time of his goddamn life in this movie. And so all these men are surrounding Hercules and his guys, and that's when the He-Man thing happens. He holds up his sword, Zeus strikes the sword, it goes into this fucking really wide shot that kind of looks like <laughs> fucking Mickey Rourke and Iron Man 2 just swinging around electricity at people. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> the, the lightning bolt hits the sword and then just like sticks there. So he's swinging this mm -hmm. giant like lightning whip. Yeah. Like, it looks like it looks like he had a fucking proton pack yeah. just swinging around and just kills 
everyone. <laughs> Although not any of his people, because that'd be poor form. Oh yeah, he'd be a terrible god. There's no collateral damage in this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the part where uh, the queen was talking to uh, Commodus, and she said? Uh, said something like, what was the fucking line? It alluded to th that Scott Atkins was, like, horrible in bed. She was like, oh, because he was saying to her, like, because he's sworn to marry the girl that Hercules is in love with, and, and, she's in, and she's in love with Hercules, so he's talking to his mom and saying, I, I don't want, like, an arranged marriage like that. Which, for the first 30 minutes of the movie, I was kind of like, you know, his argument's perfectly sound. Like, I, I get this. And then he starts, like, killing people and becomes the bad guy. But <laughs> And and then the mom says something like, like, oh, you're over-exaggerating. It was only a good one second of love with me and the king, and that was to conceive you. Like, fucking too much information, mom. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> By the way, your dad's got a little dick, too. Yeah, he's got a, <laughs> your dad's got a baby dick. I needed a god to service me correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and look at your brother, he's huge. Mm hmm Oh yeah. He is horrible in this. He looks like he looks in and has the same acting qualities as like a shaved gorilla. Yeah. And I, d I don't tan his leather too. Know how to properly talk about his accent in it. Because again, it's like Every time he gets to the last word in a sentence, it's like he cuts three letters off. Like, Father, you are a coward. Like that. Every every sentence. Well, yeah, it's to make him sound all Thor-like. No, it was to get the movie <laughs> only 90 minutes. <laughs> so they, did, they, they, they trimmed out just fractions of seconds all over by just trimming his dial. Oh, yeah. Because it was turned out it was too long when they put in the slow motion. Here's every slow mo. Dear God, the slow motion in this. It's it would like be like every punch, every punch, every flip, everything, and it starts out regular and then just goes into slow motion and then speeds ah! back. Up. It would be, yeah. It would be like if I'm handing Brian a drink and I'm like, huh, uh, huh, like that. That's exactly what it is. And can we talk about the 3D in this? <laughs> <laughs> this movie, I think, single-handedly is the most distracting 3D movie yeah, I've ever been to. I totally agree. It was the worst effective 3D I've seen. Because it, the 3D effect is, is there. Like, it is. I mean, it's not, it doesn't look like Last Airbender, where it's obviously like a conversion and whatnot. I mean, the effect is there. Things are coming out at the screen. I mean, hell, I mean, a couple times it looked fine, like when he's throwing the rocks around, and that that looked fine, but... Well, as good as could be expected. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but there are several scenes in this when... And it's... It's a typical 3D effect that you see in a lot of movies, where it's snowing or there's ash, or there's confetti across the screen. Leaves falling. Leaves. But, in this movie's case, it was like if, if someone was just throwing confetti at your face while you're trying to watch a movie. Yeah, it like it's like if they had like the, the little, uh, those puffy little thing, like the dandelion, whatever. Yeah. Thing. It was just a... Doing that right in your face while you're trying to watch the movie, like it was fucking distracting because it was just this constant like snow effect in front of. Well, it, like, you could see like where they had filmed and like put some into where it looked good on there, yeah, and then put extra on top of it for the 3D effect. So it was just this blurry, like just constantly felt like they were shit in your face. And there was so much of it, so because you, you're distracted by it and you're watching all this, like like you said, like pollen and shit. And then other parts, too, where there would be, like, a, a flag obscuring the screen, but it's done, it's not, it blended in with the background very well. It just looks like someone's waving a flag in front of your face as you're trying to watch the movie. It's, it's so hard to explain unless you see it, because it... Well, like how sometimes, like, if, uh, like, you know, the light's coming into, like, the room, like, just right sometimes, uh -huh. like, you see all the dust in the room, you're like, wow, that's a lot of dust. But then try to watch a movie on the other side of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's... Well, and, and in certain scenes, too, like, there were... I don't know if it was actually supposed to be leaves or confetti or what it was. But like, it was it was bits or maybe, like, yay big, like, sort of, yeah. like, quarter to a half dollar size. But they were just, like, constantly just, like, floating in front of the screen. And it was very fucking obvious yeah like cg'd in there so it just looked like somebody cg'd like polka dots on the you screen. were blowing at the screen like, <laughs> <laughs> like go away i was doing that too i was just see. going jesus christ get the fucking shit out of my face i go to th i'm every time that there's a 3d version of a movie that's out i'm at them i see 3d movies all the time i've never seen it more distracting than in this movie. It was there were a couple times where I had to take the glasses off because I felt like I was going cross-eyed. Well, and like I say, like because it was like you could see there was stuff in the background, and then there was the actors, and then there was the CG layer doing the 3D on top of it. But like right now, like you're focusing on my hand, you can't mm -hmm. see my face because there's shit in front of me. Yeah, face. and that's what it was. Like there, there's these scenes happening, but there was so much shit falling on the screen, you couldn't see like. Your eye just naturally wants to focus on the thing that's moving. Oh, oh, God, yeah. And it's like, those scenes, like, I have no idea what, what they were doing in the background. Mm -hmm. They could have been making fucking faces out of like, eh, <laughs> watching this fucking movie. Arr, Scott Adkins' face. Arr. Oh, yeah, like, literally half the movie is just people making that face. Arr, uh -huh. arr, arr. You cheated on me, you whore. Where is he? Where's the brute who knocked up my wife? Ah, ah! And then, like, he fucking leaves at the beginning after Zeus knocks her up and just screams, like, ah! Lightning comes down and, like, strikes the fucking fireplace and shit. <laughs> Oh, oh, you get it. The, the, this is probably the funniest part of the Guardian thing. Was the fucking moon at the end of it? This was weird. This was, whole movie is weird. It was weird. Just odd. Mm -hmm. It was the last distracting thing out of any. <laughs> yeah. Like everything is happy, and Hercules is now King Hercules, I guess. Yeah. And he's walking around on, like up on like the fucking like fortified like castle wall because he's batman <laughs> looking like fucking batman <laughs> looking like he looks like fucking like like the style of cape that like todd mcfarlane would draw yeah like just like yeah. for fucking spawn with like the 50 mile long mm. cape that never touches the ground as it's blowing yeah it's like that's what he has and he's walking by and he kind of looks over his shoulder with this really shitty like Thanks, Dad. <laughs> we'll see in a few months in the Dwayne Johnson one. And then it pans to the opposite shot, like it's gonna maybe show something, and it's just the sky, and you see the moon, big as my fist on... It looks like the fucking moon from, like, Conan. From Conan <laughs> O'Brien. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's just like... Yeah. And just takes off, like... Bye. Bye, like, moon. Bye. <laughs> because the rest night, of the... moon. <laughs> the rest of the fucking sky is not moving, really. Everything it's... else is the same. Like, there's there's a bunch of stars, but then there's also, if you notice, like, that mm -hmm. same, like, pollen, like... Yeah. Dust blowing in front of the screen. And then, <clears throat> out of nowhere... <laughs> moon comes back. It comes Bye. back. <laughs> it takes off. <laughs> it's like, what is he doing? There's gonna be so many fucking tsunamis happening, like after the events of this of this movie. Holy shit! Like, it's gonna turn into fucking Pompeii. Well, yeah. that's what it leads up to. That's that's how he did. He's like, okay, I'm gonna pull this up. <laughs> it was like uh, I should have done that. I'll put this back. <laughs> <laughs> it was like somebody just accidentally set the moon to a scroll effect to go along with the credits. Like, oh, uh, the credits have got a scroll. Let's add that in there. Oh shit! I just did the same thing to the fucking moon. Uh, <laughs> bye, <laughs> bye, moon. <laughs> well, it's like when you do something weird. Uh, <clears throat> in like a like, it seemed like the sort of like glitch you'd have in like a video game. Like, yeah. Like I was, I was playing uh, uh, Last of Us one time, and uh, uh, I was, I was standing down here, and Ellie was standing up here. And she was supposed to drop a ladder for me, and the ladder hit, hit me, and for whatever reason, uh, Joel on the screen just decides to start floating up into the fucking sky. Uh huh. <laughs> I got like 15 feet up, and then just fell to the ground, instantly died. I'm like. 
What the hell just happened? Don't worry, I saw John Marsden do the same thing one time. Except I think he, t- <laughs> except I, I think he took a hooker with him. <laughs> it's okay. She, she was probably secretly a bobcat wearing the wrong, <laughs> the wrong character. You know, like... That what you just said is par for the fucking course with this movie. Because in the first twenty minutes, I lean over to you and I'm like, "So this is just cut scenes from a video game, right?" Like it was. Like the 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 woman who prophesizes that she's going to give birth to Hercules from Zeus. Like shit, I saw that scene in the first God of War game. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Oh, well, she's only doing this, and she's going to leave until." Turok that he's got to save some girl, little girls in the abandoned town. Like, <laughs> it's the same style of voice as, yeah, God of War and, like, any game where you have this mythical female figure giving you this very angelic-like narration to tell you what to do. That's what it was. Well, it, I mean, it especially, like, there were several scenes in this that made me think of God of War. I mean, not just you know, not just because of like the setting, but because of just like yeah. like the way they would have him dressed or shit like mm. that. But especially the scene like like yeah, when when he gets the power of Hercules and instead of like like I always thought the thing was like him pulling those columns down. No, he just like decapitates them with like yeah. and then he's just got these mile long chains attached to his wrist with like these big concrete blocks on it and he's just swinging them around like fucking Kratos would like, <laughs> yeah like I've played this game <laughs> a couple of them yeah you're sitting there like don't worry they're gonna let us play the game any minute now <laughs> so you're like any minute now <laughs> any minute now any minute now we can start playing this any long minute. fucking cutscenes <laughs> Metal Gear style cutscenes god oh no 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 Fucking uh, the Game of Thrones game that we picked up on Bad Game Night that one time. <laughs> I still don't believe that there's a game attached to that. <laughs> we might I think get it's just this... a really bad movie. <laughs> God, we fucking get this game, and I was up. We had a TV downstairs, TV upstairs. I was upstairs. You guys were downstairs playing that. I go through at one point. I'm like, oh, well, that looks kind of like. Oh no, I was upstairs with you. We were playing like. We were playing Revolution X, weren't we? Revolution X and yeah. like the Die Hard trilogy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put left up here, McLean. And so, fucking, like, I go downstairs at one point, and, like, Irving and Dave and the rest of them are down there, like, t- picking out their swords and, like, what fur they're gonna wear. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then I go up back upstairs, and then 20 minutes later, I go back down, and I'm like, oh, are you guys still, like, picking out, like, armor and shit? And they're like, dude, we haven't even fucking started playing yet. We're fucking still picking out shields and armor. <laughs> It's a very detailed process. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I, re- I remember, like, <clears throat> at a point, like, they just kept going with it to see how long it would be before you could actually start playing. This game's not going to beat us. It's not going to beat us. We're sticking with this shit. Oh, shit. It was like a half hour later they were still going through fucking cutscenes. Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Should have gone back to playing, like, that big game hunter and, like, shooting... Moose on the loose. <laughs> shooting lions. <laughs> oh, oh, the fucking lion in this movie. <laughs> Wait, that lion in this movie was about as believable as the fucking fox from 47 Ronin. Fucking 47 Ronin's got this CGI fox where I think they only had enough money in their $200 million budget to use the same effect of this fox standing there and walking away. They just changed the background every time he showed up. <laughs> God. Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> do, do you do you recommend seeing this? Because I kind of do. I, in, a, <laughs> in a way, I do uh-huh. because it's it's short. It's like eighty minutes. Oh, it's fucking short, man. It comes and goes. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, almost just for for Scott Atkins alone. Yeah, yeah. This is this is worth it. It's. It's stupid as shit. You will, like, we spent half the movie just fucking dying laughing. <laughs> yeah, in a surprisingly crowded theater. Well, I mean, they, they put us in, <clears throat> they put us in theater three here, which mm-hmm. is like a phone booth. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it looks surprisingly packed, but if we were in any other auditorium, we would have been like, fuck, this is empty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. I mean, but there, there were at least probably 15 people there, which is... 13 more than I was expecting, quite honestly. <laughs> Do you like the movie, lady? <laughs> uh. 
Um, as soon as the moon started leaving, she's like, well, 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 the, well the moon's not in it anymore? Well, I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, f- I'm, I'm with you. Like, I laughed my ass off in this. I, I totally support Scott Adkins being in more movies, <laughs> being in more mainstream movies. Like, see this, if anything, to make Scott Adkins like a fucking star. Um... Well, and, and you could really tell, like, like he was definitely having the time of his life, but, I mean, honestly, like, like this is probably, like, the biggest thing I've seen him in. Other than Expendables 2. Um, well, yeah, I mean, like, actually with, like, a very, like, carrying performance, not just, like, you know, number one hench. Oh, yeah, yeah, like... Because, <laughs> like, I mean, I know that he's the main character in plenty of, like, his own movies. Like, yeah, like Ninja. Like Ninja and, and uh, you know... Other. Universal Soldier yeah. Day of Reckoning. <laughs> I remember he's, he's in another one with uh, Van Damme too, like Assassin's Game or something like that. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. And um, uh, I mean, but but those are all like, you know, for the most part, just smaller films or like direct-to-video stuff. Yeah, I mean, like th- this he is was... definitely the biggest thing. I mean, yeah, aside from Expendables, like this is the biggest thing I've seen him. But definitely where he's been like a main character. Yeah, because he's he's the villain in this. I mean, we were talking about the Commodus guy, but Scott Atkins is definitely the lead villain in this movie. He's the the sheriff of Nottingham of this. See, that's that's honestly a pretty good comparison. <laughs> um, I mean, they didn't really give him as much free reign to act bat shit as they did Alan Rickman but um, he worked with what he had yeah he worked with what he he completely worked with what he had I mean he chewed scenery left and right and was amazing he's also in he also popped up in Zero Dark Thirty but again like so much so to where I didn't even realize he was there until I saw his name on the credits Senator here's that document you wanted thank you (laughs) I would like if you got, I, I don't know. I haven't seen that. Movie. Zero Dark Thirty. <laughs> I feel really bad if he actually has like a decent role or does really good in it. I'm just like trivializing it. Like it's like here's your coffee, sir. Thanks. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um. Then he floats up. <laughs> with the moon. Um. I I would say like if you, you know, if you've got some friends who like sitting through this kind of thing like we do and just cackling through this because it is there is some great fodder in this movie they're really fucking it it really is like they released the fucking asylum version to the theater i would say yeah grab like for like a five dollar matinee or something shit fuck it why not go go ahead Go have some fun at this shitty fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and honestly though, like it, it's got enough like of that same style of thing that like if you liked Three Hundred and you liked Immortals, this has you written all over it. I mean, you're probably already gonna watch it anyway. The guys in the bathroom when I when I went to the bathroom, there were a couple of guys in there, um, and they were sort of, they were talking about Spartacus. They 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 were at Hercules too, and they were like. <laughs> Well, that wasn't as fucking good as Spartacus. And the guy's like, no, nah, it wasn't. The guy like, have you seen that? You seen Spartacus on uh, on Stars? And uh, it took me a second because I was like, at first I thought they were talking about the Kubrick one, and then they mentioned Stars, and I was like, that's oddly. They're showing Kubrick Spartacus on. That's oddly specific. I'm like, oh, the show. Okay. And the guy's like, no, nah, I haven't checked that out yet. He's like, well, the other guy's like, it's much better than this movie. But then he pauses and goes, but this movie's pretty fucking good, though. <laughs> <laughs> that other thing's better, but this fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, he totally twisted it around there at the end. Uh, like, it came full circle to, like, a fucking positive review. He really liked it. He just had to shit on it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like whenever we look on Rotten Tomatoes, it's like, it's like, well, this movie wasn't as bad as I heard. Oh, positive review. Fucking guy from, uh, <laughs> what was that? Grown Ups 2 and he goes like well I guess I didn't hate it four stars <laughs> just because you didn't hate it doesn't mean it's good it just means it's not as bad as you hoped <laughs> or the one guy on uh, Getaway stuff happened four stars <laughs> that's not an inaccurate review <laughs> stuff happened <laughs> See? You were way too hard on that movie. You forgot about all this stuff that happened. <laughs> I got 
distracted by all the other stuff on the 75 other cameras filming that one take. Man, oh man, I wish Bruce Payne was in this movie. <laughs> that would have been great. I'm surprised he wasn't. I got fucking seen here. This is about the kind of movie I usually see him in. Well, in in what threw me, like, we noticed this uh, right as the credits started rolling. At the end? Yeah, it's like... <clears throat> A majority, it's what made us think, like, like is this, like, an Asylum film or, like, secretly, like, one of Uwe Boll's films? Nah, Rennie Harlan. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, like, every single cast member and half of the crew and everything, like, everybody was, like, like, Romanian or Ukrainian or some shit. Like, they all had, like, very, like, like that sort of, like, Russian-ish type, you yeah. know. Yeah. Like, every other, like, Nikolai, Dimitri, Dimitri, Kristoff, Dimitri, Nikolai. Mm -hmm. Like... Okay. It's in Boris the Blade's contract. He brings his own crew with him everywhere. Fucking apparently. <laughs> and kudos to fucking Boris the sneaky fucking Russian mm -hmm. for not dropping that accent at all. Yeah. He went Valkyrie with this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like Kaitel <laughs> in Last Temptation, just sticking with the Brooklyn accent, <laughs> playing Judas. Here you go. Give this, give me this Art Garfunkel perm to put on your head. <laughs> Fuck. What what happened to Rennie Harlan, man? <laughs> fucking Die Hard 2! Fucking uh, Cliffhanger! Ford Fairlane! <laughs> and now... This, I mean, well... I mean, it's like... It's, I, th this was bad, but I guess at the end of the day, I am still like, oh, you should totally go see it. <laughs> it's okay. better than the last movie of his I saw, which was Mindhunters. Honestly, I bet it was sort of a thing like in a Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, mm -hmm. <laughs> where they're like doing like the fake Wes Craven movie. Like Wes, Wes, he's like something. Like, Just counting <laughs> money, like yeah. I'm busy, man. <laughs> Busy, busy. This <laughs> Rennie Harlan just—he's pretty. If he Rennie Harlan's doing that, he's being pretty fucking co confident for considering his last several movies. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Try a little harder, Rennie Harlan. <laughs> Man, uh, well, you ready to go see Ghost Cholo? <laughs> We're gonna go see some fucking ghost jello. We'll be back in 80 minutes. <laughs> Cucurico,